Hi, I'm Dr. Drew Ramsey reporting from Medscape Psychiatry. I'm an assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at Columbia University. Exercise is one of those recommendations that clinicians love, but what's the evidence that exercise can help our patients with depression? There's a wonderful new study and analysis of the, the HUNT study. This is a data set of 33,000 healthy individuals that were in Nord Trøndelag, Norway, and they were followed starting in about 1985. Now, it's a very interesting study, and if you're interested in adding in exercise as a recommendation to your patients. First, the, the evidence now is, is quite clear that it can help with the prevention of depression. And also, as we know, it's a, it's a recommendation that patients uh, like and, and can participate in right away. So what happened? So 33,000 people followed over, uh, over 25 years. It, it, initially, they were screened very carefully to make sure that there are healthy individuals who are being followed, so nobody who had a pre-existing condition of depression who was actively depressed. And then they measured individuals' exercise uh, uh, habits and found that, that even uh, exercise at uh, one, about one and a half times a week, had a significant effect in preventing depression. Over the course of the study, uh, about 7% uh, of the individuals became depressed and about uh, almost 9% developed an anxiety disorder. Now, interestingly enough, there wasn't really a protective effect of, uh, for anxiety when it came to exercise. However, for depression, there was. They estimated that compared to individuals who did not exercise, individuals exercising an hour or more a week had a 44 percent decreased odds ratio of getting depressed. So, so quite a significant finding. Uh, in the discussion, they talk about that if this were causal, right, if depression was a, was a causal uh, factor in depression, that about 12 percent of cases could be prevented if all adults exercised for a little over an hour a week. So how will this affect your clinical practice? Well, the first thing that I thought of was the, the, the lack of a finding for anxiety. And perhaps one of those reasons is this is a study of prevention. Exercise is one of the most helpful tools I've found uh, clinically to help patients with anxiety. It's often something that patients report, right? They have some anxiety and, and after a workout they feel great. Now, there is some data certainly showing that, that anxiety can be helped or mitigated by regular exercise. But the findings here for depression are, are quite exciting and they give us a, a nice piece of evidence, uh, both for our own education. Uh, the, the authors of the study do a very nice job talking about some of the physiological factors. For example, uh, individuals who exercise more to have a better autonomic nervous system tone, meaning that their heart rate's a little bit slower, and also discuss other physiological ways that exercise and physical conditioning can relate to depression. It's a great study. I uh, encourage you to pick it up. And then I'm curious, how do you integrate exercise into your practice? One of the, the uh, other um, issues I considered was that even though we've, we've known for quite a while that exercise can be helpful in mitigating depression, it's not something that we often teach residents. It's not something that we often incorporate into practice. For example, in a standard psychiatric evaluation, assessing our patients' uh, exercise routines and preferences is not something traditionally we're taught to do. I'd suggest that now the evidence tells us that we should, and I'm really curious how you're incorporating these findings into your clinical practice. I'm Dr. Drew Ramsey from Medscape Psychiatry.